Hello and welcome to Inside Unreal, where you can see how to make content for Unreal Engine 4. I'm Zach Parrish, and I'm joined today by Epic Games senior technical artist Jordan Walker. Hi, Zach. Hey, Jordan. Now, I understand that you worked on the Infiltrator tech demo that Epic released earlier this year. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. So, Infiltrator is a real-time tech demonstration that we use to show off the capabilities of Unreal Engine 4. In it, we have high dynamic range reflections, uh, GPU particles with collision, material layers, as well as many more features. Now, if I recall correctly, you used the new material system to help define the look and the feel of the characters in Infiltrator. That's correct. So a character artist would hand me a character model, and I would create material layers and textures to define how those surfaces react to light. OK, and we're going to be seeing a little bit of that today. That's correct. Awesome. So why don't we start by taking one of the characters from Infiltrator and kind of how he looked in the final cinematic, and then you can break down how you were able to achieve that look using the tools in Unreal Engine 4. Sure. So this is the character as he appears in the demo. Um, you can see he has a couple different surfaces. There's some chrome buckle here. There's uh, like a military fabric stretched across his chest. There's this padded fabric down below as well. Um, and as far as the workflow goes, we would start this uh, the same way we would start a character before. So a character artist would create a high polygon model. Um, they would process a normal map from that model and hand that off to a texture artist. Uh, once the texture artist received that asset, they would create a few different textures, um, one of them being a material mask that kind of color codes where each material goes on the surface. Now, in this case, when you say where each material goes, are you talking about like the different types of surfaces that make up the characters? Right, so here you can see they uh, colored in where metal goes on his mask. And then down here, they've colored where um, like the fabric padding goes and where the black plastic goes. Okay. So it literally is color coding the different types of surfaces that make him up. Exactly. All right, cool. Um, here you can see the artist creates an asset that's uh, basically a texture that defines where grime resides on the surface, where dirt collects. You can see in the cracks of things, uh, this texture is a lot heavier. And it's basically saying, uh, this is where the surface is dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, this final texture that an artist creates uh, says where the scratches and the scuff marks happen. And they would do that on the edges of objects. They do it where a surface maybe like rubs against other things. So this is an example of a variant that we made where I took just one of the layers, which was composite plastic, and said, now it's this like orangey copper metal color. And that used all of the same textures that we created before. I just swapped out one material layer. Yeah, and the touch of color actually looks really amazing there. Very nice. Now, in the Infiltrator demo, uh, you actually used a combination of the traditional approach along with the incorporation of these layered materials. Can you talk a bit about how you did that? Right, so we used a traditional approach to create the material layers. So an artist will create a tiling base color, a tiling roughness texture, and a tiling normal map the same way they would before. They make that material layer look good, and then they use the new techniques of material layers to combine all of those together. And they still use traditional techniques to create the masks, right? Like those are created using Photoshop or 3D paint programs to blend the material layers together. So how do you benefit from using this hybrid technique? So you get the benefits from material layers, which is a really high resolution tiling material um, combined with the benefits of traditional techniques where an artist is saying, you know, I want a scuff mark on his shoulder pad or I want um, copper on this part of his body. And so you're allowed custom surface information, but it still looks really high resolution and highly detailed. So I understand that Unreal Engine 4 uses a physically based shading model. Uh, why does that matter here? It's nice because when an artist creates a material layer, they know that it's going to react to light in a consistent manner, no matter what lighting condition it's placed in. Um, this keeps the artist from having to tweak their surface for individual lighting conditions. So as an artist yourself, uh, what is it that you want other artists and designers to take away from this? One of the really cool aspects is that it's very easy to make consistent art across your entire project. So you make your metals, you make your cloth, 
you create your materials that you know you're going to use, and wherever they're used in your project, you know that they're consistent and they're high quality. And it's also useful because, you know, say you have this like paint that's used in your game, and you have an art director who says, you know, could we make that slightly more blue? Um, you can update that one asset, and since it's used across your entire game, everything updates automatically. So there's a look at creating highly detailed character assets using Unreal Engine 4 with some of our new material tools and techniques. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope to see you on the next Inside Unreal.